Why do electrons in an atom keep a distance from the protons if opposite charges attract? <laughs> Why don't electrons crash into the nucleus? Excellent question. Yeah, it's okay. an excellent question. And uh, there is no answer to that. Uh, in other words, under quantum, they have no answer to that. In fact, it, it gets even worse. It gets very uh, much worse. If you look at the p orbitals, what's an orbital? An orbital is the region where you can find an electron bead. The p orbitals go through the center of the atom out the other side because, <laughs> and the way they, they uh, get around that is saying, well, the p orbital really doesn't go through the center of the atom. It, it, it kind of starts on the outside of the proton. So you, you'll see these elongated balloons, and that's what they are, balloons. And they say, you can find the electron anywhere in here, but you can't find it in the center of the atom where, where the proton is. And you say, well, why can't you find it in the center if this guy's negative and the other guy's positive? As soon as it reaches anywhere close to the proton, the protons just suck it in. It's more or less the same problem that we have with black holes. And I'm not di digressing here. I'm, I'm just giving you an analogy. Uh, uh, what, is, what is this uh, white hole or, or, or what is the stuff that comes out of a, a black hole, which makes it have uh, visibility? Well, according to these folks, uh, Hawking explained now in the Hawking radiation, half of the particle falls into the black hole, the other half comes out. You know, they, they kind of split. You have the negative and the positive. One goes into the hole and the other one escapes because now it's been freed from its shackles. But the question is, why don't both particles fall in if you got this immense gravity? It's not like gravity stops at the uh, event horizon. You've got gravity, if, if there's a black hole, uh, the, the event horizon is just a, the line of danger. That's where you get sucked in. But one centimeter right outside that, it doesn't mean that there's no gravity. There's still a lot of gravity there. In fact, there has to be gravity if the black hole is sucking material from a star, which is, you know, light years away as they say, right? So if it's sucking from over there, obviously anything in the vicinity of the black hole should fall in. There should be no Hawking radiation. Under what circumstance would the split particle, the, the twin that got, you know, split from the other guy, one falls in, fine, we understand that. Why did the other guy come to your eye? And that's what we can't explain. The electron and the atom is, is more or less the same thing. It's the same concept that the mathematicians have given us. They're saying, here you have an atom, and, and here you have the electron bead going all around it, Bob. Uh, it used to be the planetary model that was Bohr, and they said, well, Bohr was wrong. So they came up with Schrodinger's equation, which essentially says you can find the electron anywhere here, but it came with a probability wave, whatever that thing is. Okay, so you find the electron bead all around, and, and uh, around the uh, nucleus. And the question is, if it's jumping around and it gets close to the proton, why doesn't it fall in? Is same thing as the black hole. You know, why doesn't why does it why can you do ionization? Ionization is the removal of the electron bead from the from the and let's use hydrogen since it's only got one. If you ionize hydrogen, you remove the electron bead. And the question is, how did you do that? <laughs> how did you pull the electron bead if it's a discrete entity? How did you keep it within hydrogen to begin with? These are the questions that you'll never have an answer to, and that's why they say no one understands quantum mechanics. That's the best answer I can give you. <laughs>